Hey guys, welcome to the selecting and transforming tutorial for Blender. In this video, you're going to learn how to select objects using various different methods, as well as how to transform objects, which includes location, rotation, and scale. So let's go over the most basic way to select something in Blender, which is with the mouse. Now you can select stuff with the mouse very easily by right clicking on an object. And once you see that orange border around that object, that means that object is selected. It is now your active object. And uh, you can also shift select to select multiple objects. And this is with right click again. Now you might be wondering right now, why is it right click and why is it not left click like every other software in the world? Well, there's actually a good reason why it's like that. And in my opinion, for 3D software, it is much preferable to use right click as opposed to left click. There's a lot of 3D software out there that uses left click and it causes some problems that Blender just never has. And so I'll show you that in a second. Now, there are tons of you probably wondering, can I switch it to left click? Can I just switch it to left click, please? Because I want left click. Well, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to show you how to make it left click by going to File, User Preferences, and then go to Input. And then right here it says Select With. By default, it's right. Let's go ahead and select Left now. And by the way, all the menu selections are with left click still. It's only the viewport that's right click. And let's go ahead and close that. Now that we've done that, I actually want to demonstrate why I don't like left click. So let's show you some examples of what might happen if you were to switch it to left click like I just did. So you can see my mouse here. I'm clearly left clicking now to select objects, and that's all great and dandy. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to wireframe mode real quick to demonstrate this. And let's zoom in and take a look at this, uh, this cube and this sphere, right? Um, this sphere is behind the cube, as you can see, in solid mode. It's right there. And let's say I'm, you know... I have this cube selected and I want to select that sphere, right? Well, let's go ahead and select it. Wait, why am I not selecting the sphere? What, why am I dragging this thing up and down? Oh, that's right, because the manipulator was in the way. And I'm, you might have seen that. Let me go ahead and control Z that real quick. This manipulator is the XYZ location manipulator, which we'll go into during the transformation part of this video. But just know that because it is there, you can typically left click and drag these arrows to transform, even with right click as select. That's what you're supposed to do. That's a left click drag. Now, if you also use left click for selection and you try to select something, but that manipulator's in the way, suddenly the, the software doesn't know what your intention is. It just assumes that you're trying to click that manipulator. It doesn't know that you're trying to click the object behind that manipulator. This is a very, very simple problem, but is a very, very simple solution, which is to use a different button for selection. And in my opinion, let's go ahead and switch over to right click real quick. And we'll notice right here, if I want to select that sphere, even if I put my cursor right on the manipulator, if I right click, it's no, it's no problem. No problem at all. It knows exactly what I'm trying to do. It differentiates between my intention of transforming with the manipulator and selecting the object. So I highly, highly recommend keeping it as right click as it is by default because of this simple issue, which may be a lot more common than you think when you're trying to work fast. So if you get used to right click now, it will pay off in the future, I guarantee you. Now, moving on, there's several other ways to select and deselect objects. So with the most basic form of selection out of the way, I also want to tell you how to toggle select all. Now, in most software, select all is control A. Don't do control A, that does something else here. This says apply location rotation scale. You don't have to worry about that right now. That's something else entirely. What you do for selecting all is you just press A. Just A, no control, no alt, no shift, just A. And A will actually toggle select all. So it's either select all or deselect all. And so you notice because I had something selected, now nothing is selected, nothing has the orange border anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and press A again. And notice everything is now selected. So everything is now orange, which means that everything is selected. I can press A again, deselects. So that is a toggle all, essentially. Now, I already showed you how to select multiple things with shift and then right click. But you can also, and we go ahead and deselect these, you can also use two tools, the circle select tool and the box select tool. I'm going to start with the box select tool because it's a little bit more familiar for everyone. Basically, you press the B button, and that will bring up this sort of crosshair. And what you can do is you can left click drag, and that will select everything within that box. You notice the camera wasn't selected because I didn't select that inside the box. You can also press B and then middle mouse drag, to deselect. Now you might be wondering what happens when I right click drag. Well, you can't because right click actually cancels the box select. So anytime you have a tool up or anything like that, right click typically cancels stuff as well. So it's very helpful. 
Now, you can also use circle select, which I mentioned, and circle select is more like a paintbrush. So you can press C here, and C will bring up this circle. And you can make the circle bigger or smaller by scrolling up or down. And you can actually paint the area that you want to select, and it will select those objects. So you can actually left click drag this, 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 and then, you know, let go. You can also keep going if you want to. You can start and stop at any time. And if you want to deselect, of course, you use middle mouse drag, middle mouse drag, middle mouse drag, middle mouse drag. And again, if you want to cancel this tool and get out of this selection mode, let me go ahead and select a few things and then right click will cancel that mode. So that's a good way to select multiple objects at once as well. So that's it for selecting. Next is transforming. And I'm going to go ahead and select this cube here to target it for the transformation. And I already mentioned you can left click drag this manipulator here. And so this is how you can easily sort of change the location of the object. But this isn't very helpful because sometimes you don't want to move it along an axis, right? Because this only moves it along one of the three main axes. Now you can also click the inside here, which is this uh, inside of this white circle. And that will allow you to manipulate it based on your view plane. So you can just kind of move it around more or less pretty freely. So I'm actually going to come back to this manipulator later because I'm going to teach you my preferred method of transforming first and then let you decide which one you want to do. So instead of manipulating it with left click drag on this manipulator here, uh, you can also use hotkeys, which I prefer. You can use G for grab. and I'm going to go ahead and hit G and that will automatically put the object into a white outline, which means it's currently actively being transformed. And just move your mouse around. You don't have to hold down any buttons anymore. Your mouse is already locked to the transformation function. And when you're done transforming, you simply left click to confirm. You can also right click to cancel. So let's go and do that again. G and then right click snaps it back to the original position. You can do the same thing with the other hotkeys, which is R for rotate. And you'll notice it can rotate along the viewplane there. I'm going to go ahead and right click to cancel that or left click to confirm and you can also use s to scale and again right click to cancel or left click to confirm giant cube now this cube's a little bit too big well how do i bring everything back well there is a hotkey for that as well and it's very nice because it zeroes out all the transformations so if you want to bring it back to its original scale go ahead and hit alt s instead of just s you hit alt s if you want to change the rotation back to normal, you can hit Alt-R. And if you want to bring the location back to normal, you guessed it, it's Alt-G. And that will bring it back to the 0, 0, 0 position. So it's a very, very helpful way of transforming. Now you might be wondering, well, that's great, Dylan, but how do you transform along an axis? I mean, you did that with the manipulator earlier. Surely that's a useful function, and it is. And I'll show you how easy that is now. With G, you can hit G and now it's in free transform and go ahead and hit X for the X axis. And again, still don't have to hold down anything. Y for the Y axis or Z for the Z axis. And that's it. It's as simple as that. You can still left click to confirm and everything like that. Uh, same thing with R. You can use uh, R for the X axis, R for the Y axis, R for the Z axis. Entirely up to you. And then left click to confirm. So another thing you can do with rotate is you can actually hit R twice. So if you hit R once, that's the view plane rotation. And you hit R again after this mode is activated. And it will give you a free rotation. So you can clearly rotate in whatever direction you really need to. It's very, very flexible and useful for rotation there. And again, left click to confirm or right click to cancel. And S, of course, as well. S, X, and uh, why so very very helpful very very useful and efficient hotkeys in my opinion and easier on the hands so I'm gonna go ahead and zero that out now to continue with what I was doing with the manipulator for those of you guys who don't like using hotkeys for whatever reason you can use the manipulator and you can go ahead and I already showed you how to use the location manipulator but you can also use the rotation manipulator by going down here and simply selecting this option which is the rotation manipulator so I'm gonna go ahead and click that and you'll notice things have changed a little bit so you can actually move it this way by clicking and dragging that axis this axis or the white axis which is your viewplane so alt R for that and you can also go here for the scale 
So again, z-axis, y-axis, x-axis, and of course, all axes. So that's how you use the manipulator in a pretty plain and simple sense. I feel like the hotkeys are much more efficient and much more flexible. So again, that's my recommendation. If you can't use hotkeys for whatever reason, that's fine. The manipulator is there for you to use as well. And that's it for selection and transformation in Blender.